We are on day two here since this brutal storm hit Nashville, Tennessee. There are still 35,000 people missing power. Roads are blocked in every which way. And as you can see behind me, homes have been practically flattened in parking lots. The governor asked the president today to expedite federal assistance. He'll be here tomorrow surveying the damage. An unexpected nightmare is what neighbors used to describe this scene to me. And to put things into perspective, Sean, there's more COVID-19 cases in just this month alone in the past four months combined. The short answer is no. Emergency management officials tell me if someone doesn't pass a temperature check at the shelter, they will not be turned away from seeking refuge. Instead, they'll be isolated in a corner of the shelter. The fate of Amendment 4 remains in federal court. So far, there is no timetable on when the case will move forward. Wineries say they lost more than $40 million in the month of March alone. So far, 80% of businesses have been able to continue with their production. That's right, you can't stop love. Hey, Sarah, many couples are still going ahead with their marriages during this difficult time. They're even getting creative, choosing to exchange their vows on social media. How was the weather there today, Elena? You know, Bill, for Miami, which is usually pretty windy, and it's a little bit windy right now, but it's pretty sunny, and it's nothing like the conditions that we have been seeing as the hurricane season has been coming to an end here. So a little bit of wind, but mostly sun, so not sure that's a contributing factor. Luann and Charles, candidates are crisscrossing New Hampshire ahead of Tuesday's primaries, trying to get all those final votes. In an iconic Cuban restaurant located in the heart of Little Havana, dozens of Latinos gather daily to sip strong coffee and talk politics. The latest hot topic, rising Democratic candidate Bernie Sanders and his potential impact on their community. It's unfair to simply say everything is bad. You know, when Fidel Castro came into office, you know what he did? He had a massive literacy program. Is that a bad thing? I'm a Cuban Democrat. I've been a lifelong Democrat. And I watched the interview of uh, Bernie Sanders. I'm not a supporter of his to begin with, but that kind of put you know, the nail in the coffin for me. Sanders success in the early states could signal a problem for Florida Democrats if he wins the nomination because a large number of Cubans and Venezuelans now living in the Sunshine State don't see eye to eye with him on their country's regimes. He has turned off all of the Cuban population in Miami and I, I would venture to say the Venezuelan population, the Nicaraguan population. Bernie Sandy like everything free, university free. He never lived in Cuba. Many Venezuelan immigrants sing the same tune after fleeing the Maduro regime with just the clothes on their back. It's a perfect example of the situation happening in Venezuela between the living in democracy and living in socialism. Political analysts say Sanders' government-run policy ideas like his push for Medicare for All has some moderate voters looking elsewhere, possibly towards Trump. The reality is that in a state that is a 2% state, 60,000 votes could make the difference. The Republicans, it will be Christmas in, in August, I guess, right, if, uh, if Bernie gets the nomination. It might even mobilize people to vote against the Democrats. On the campaign trail this week, Bernie Sanders says he has strong support amongst Latinos and will continue to grow that support. In Miami's neighborhood of Little Havana, Alina Shirazi, Fox News. 24-year-old Ahmed Ahmadi is a law school student in Miami. Like many Americans, the coronavirus pandemic is always on his mind. My grandparents, they haven't left their home in about two, three weeks, almost a month. But his concerns are mostly abroad with his family in Iran, where the death toll is now the fourth highest in the world after Italy, Spain, and China. Because they're they are elderly. The one is above 70, one is close to hitting 80. They are more f afraid of coronavirus. Doctors and nurses in Iran are doing their best to handle the crisis. A nurse who did not want to be identified says they are running low on hospital beds, gloves, masks, and testing kits. We have to use all our equipment on the patients. We use as much as we have, but there's nothing we can do. When there's not enough protection, we have to work without any. We have to visit the patients without any cover or hospital gowns. Unlike other countries, Iran is not only dealing with the complications of the virus. Couple that with sanctions and tensions between Tehran and Washington. We are hoping the situation will get fixed soon. Until now, there has been no help 
help so far in Iran. We've not seen the proper response or support from people here or the government. The Iranian Ministry of Health is now publicly rejecting outside help, claiming the country does not need more medical resources. One married couple in Tehran who didn't want to be named says they are concerned about how their country is handling the virus internally. We know that the Iranian government didn't accept uh, United States help. Governments uh, don't publish any, uh, any right news uh, about that. If you want to test your health, it's $50 and it's still not much for people. Iran's health ministry says one person dies from coronavirus every 10 minutes and 50 people are infected by the hour. Alina Shirazi, Fox 5 News. Alina Shirazi has that story. Miami is in the final preparations for this year's Super Bowl, but miles away from where the game will take off, Miami International Airport workers are keeping an eye out for human trafficking. Airport employees are working with the Department of Homeland Security on how to spot potential human trafficking victims. Florida is a state with the third highest rate uh, of per capita calls regarding human trafficking. So we thought it was important to partner with the, uh, with the entities to teach our employees on the indicators of human trafficking. In my area, we're looking for anything, uh, uh, whether it's a, it's a cell phone to a package for anything that's out of place, for me, it's a red flag. Over 600 airport employees are on board with the training, looking to identify certain behaviors, such as a lack of eye contact, a story that doesn't add up, or a fear of security workers. Anybody that comes in to look out of place, we identify those individuals, we're trying to make contact with them and be able to make sure that those individuals are okay to be here. Customs and Border Protection agents say for national security events like the Super Bowl, it's also game day for them. Anytime you have uh, an event that, that attracts, I would say, like high income uh, participants, it might be prone to situations such as illicit crime, criminal activity. The hope is to stop trafficking on the front lines of entry. If you see somebody that their freedom is being kept from them, they're not allowed to move freely, they're not allowed to express themselves freely, you see that somebody else is holding onto their documents, you know, use your sixth instinct. Airport officials say they'll be on high alert the week leading up to the Super Bowl. They are also expecting about 50,000 more passengers than usual the day after the game. In Miami, Alina Shirazi, Fox News.